left here we have the Garrison Brewery. So you actually can get a sample uh, tray which uh, you can taste five different uh, brews that are brewed there. Off to the right we have the Farmer's Market which is established in 1750. Not at that location though, but there's been an active Farmer's Market dating back to when, uh, when folks first came to the city. To the right here we have Nova Scotia Power and they just refurbished the building that's been there since 1800s back in the days where they used to use coal. Nova Scotia is a coal mining province and they used to take the what's called the coal tar and use that to uh, create gas lights well before electricity. Off to the left, you'll see a gentleman, he's facing east towards England. And he's the first governor of Nova Scotia. He came, arrived here in 1749. And he brought with him 2,500 settlers. You see a fellow out there from Arthur City. And the ones who you see with the covered porches are referred to as Victorian style houses, and they all had enclosed porches because. Uh, Nova Scotia is renowned for the, what they call the Northwesters and Northeasters. The next cemetery we're coming up to is the Holy Cross Cemetery. This is uh, a Catholic cemetery. And, and up at the far end, we have a um, uh, memorial for uh, Robert Burns. And my mother said, what do you mean I can't go into a place with my husband and have a drink? And up in 2013. And here you'll see, uh, right across the road here, uh, the public gardens, you'll see the wrought iron gates. That's the main one. Another thing is interesting about public gardens too, they have all the walkways in there. It covers an area of 16 acres, so it covers one entire city block. gardens and the fountains. There's memorials in there as well as some important people. To the left we have the Camp Hill Cemetery. So the, a lot of the uh, veterans from World War One and World War Two were uh, laid to rest there. A turtle and there, his name is Gus. He just celebrated his 94th birthday at this August. And they used to say he's, uh, he slowed down a little bit. And that's to make a common area so that uh, when the uh, military came here and the Highlanders came here from Scotland uh, to train it and work at Citadel Hill, they used to camp in tents there. It used to be used for grazing horses and and students learn to ride horses there. So you see the wrought iron gates there. And this big hole in the ground is where our new YMCA building is going to be built. As you can see Halifax is built upon rock, so it takes quite a while just to take the hole. Yep, yeah, it's the oldest military library in Canada. So we're coming up, this is the home of the Scottish Highlanders. This fort was built four times. Built originally back in 1749, rebuilt during the American Revolution, rebuilt again during the French Revolution, and finally finished in a star shape in, in um, 1856. It's two, we're at 200 feet elevation from the road we just came off. So the fort, when they built it, they chopped off the top 30 feet of this hill to put the fort here. This is where you have the best views of Halifax. See the town clock to the right? It was built in 1803. This is our fifth stop here at Citadel Hill. They have the changing of the guard every hour on the hour. This is now the home for the 78th. Highlanders, and they have 40 minute tours in there as well if you're interested. This is the second most visited tourist location east of Parliament Hill in Ottawa, our capital. That 
that's where we had the uh, call the Halifax explosion. I'll be talking about that in about five minutes, but anyway, that's where the two ships collided. And then we call the Narrows. And uh, Halifax has the deepest ice free harbor, second only to uh, Sydney, Australia. You notice how high this hill is here, and behind to the left, just over the small hill, there's a boat that's up to 40 feet deep. And so this fort here has never been attacked. And I've often wondered, well, because it's so high up, and folks had to climb up this huge hill, and then climb up over that moat to the left to get up over that brick or that uh, stone wall. It's no wonder they decided to never attack this place. As we're coming down this hill, uh, we get down here to the corner. When you look straight across, you'll see the. You'll get a better view of the commons. get a uh, better view of the commons, which I mentioned before, that's where the, uh, used to be a lake there, and it got infilled, and all of the highlanders used to set their tents there. You see, it was built as uh, ice skating racing back in the 2011 uh, Winter Olympics that we hosted here in Halifax. It was so popular, they decided they were going to keep it. century. So all the Military personnel used to go, to go through there, get logged in before they went off. At 8.30 in the morning, a Norwegian vessel was leaving the harbor and collided at very slow speed into uh, the Mont Blanc, which is, was a French ship and it carried all kinds of TNT and explosive and mental acid and Back in those days, the ships were unmarked because they didn't want to be hit by the enemy. So nobody knew that they were carrying any type of explosives. Well, they collided, started a huge fire. And the folks abandoned ship. And uh, 25 minutes later, at 9.05 in the morning, the ship blew up. Created the largest, or the second largest explosion ever in the world other than um, nuclear explosion in Hiroshima. That's how bad it was. Said, um, the other thing is the, um, a lot of the houses burnt as well because back then there was no electricity and everyone had gas. Starbucks, we have Starbucks here. Just ahead of us. I guess everyone staying on. The engineering school, all the officers, the site folks looking up to the right to see the smokestacks, you can see that bridge. Well, this says we're coming to go and make the left hand turn, you'll see the suspension. I travel across that bridge twice a day. It's interesting, I mentioned before Halifax has a population just under 400,000. That bridge has over a million cars cross that bridge every month. So it's obviously used very heavily. They have now what's called going on the big lift. It's the only second time it's ever been tried. Along with static owner, this is where they board their ships. And I don't know if the, for those of you who have uh, come from St. John, I don't know, some of you may have been in St. John, the runs of yesterday saw the Irving sign, you know, they're doing uh, naval exercises off the east coast, and use it, the energy from it to, uh, to maintain their heating and cooling systems so that they don't burn oil. So whenever the building staff done that here in Halifax. So people are trying to get off oil. In 1819, and you'll see a commemoration from the uh, board. Look at the province house and go visit our art museum. Uh, there is a stop to take. Well, he 
he got charged because he wrote about politicians and police and officers in Canada's own independent country. But uh, later in the storm, but you'll see the back end of it here, Lieutenant Governor's house. It's the oldest executive mansion in Canada. And royalty stays here. Coming down, we're going to go along the waterfront here, and I, you see our ships off to the right. And we will take the chili up. When you stop here, there's more right across the street on the left hand side. I think they have people dressed up in the 1800s uh, uniforms, and they give you a little bit of history. They have a guest shop in there, Murphy's. And the shop in there, uh, you will get to. Uh, World War One and World War Two.